Now we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the different graphs of perfect competition. Uh, so now we're, we're adding in more of those cost curves, uh, and we are now using it to analyze what's happening. Uh, most of what we're doing today is going to be short-run decisions. We will be doing long-run decisions in another lecture. Um, now for this, uh, we really only need the uh, ATC, the marginal cost curve, uh, and the Mr. DARP curve. Uh, so if we are looking at all of those here, uh, you have your MC represented by this orange curve, uh, you know, swoosh shaped. You have your Mr. DARP curve uh, as this maroon one. Uh, it's labeled as PD here, but you could add in equals MR equals AR as well. And this blue um, uh, U-shaped one, that is the ATC. If you wanted to add in one more curve, uh, as the AVC, you could, and that would just be underneath the ATC, another U-shaped curve, getting ever so slightly closer to the ATC as you uh, as you increase your quantity. Once again, because the gap between the ATC and the AVC is representative of your average fixed costs, which is going to be constantly decreasing as you increase quantity because total fixed cost remains the same throughout. So as you increase quantity, average fixed cost will decrease. So if this is our general setup. If we think about what our profit maximizing price and quantity is, we remember that our optimal output, which is our profit maximizing or our loss minimizing price and quantity for perfect competition are set by MC equals MR. So MC is the swoosh, MR is the Mr. Darp maroon curve, so where they intersect is right here at a quantity of five. Now, since Mr. Darp has the price in there as well, the price is eight. So uh, now where do you get that price from in general? Like how do they tell you how to graph that price? Remember, that's set by the market. So if you look in the market where there's a supply and demand curve, uh, where they intersect your equilibrium price, that is your Mr. Darp price. We'll do more of that when we graph in the long run. Uh, so now, is this firm earning a profit or a loss? Well, in the last lecture, we talked about the difference between uh, profit and loss by looking at the difference between marginal revenue and average cost. So if you're looking at the differences there, um, our marginal revenue is up here at eight our average total cost is down here at six. So our marginal revenue is eight. Our average total cost is six. Therefore, this firm is earning a profit per unit of $2. The difference between the marginal revenue and the average total cost. Now, if you're trying to figure out how much total profit are they earning, well, if they're uh, trying to figure out total profit, then you just multiply that by the quantity. The quantity is five. So your answer is this firm earns $10 of total profit. And there are our answers just going through. So this leads us to a few graphs that you need to make sure you know. A firm earning total profit uh, or earning economic profit is represented like this. Uh, your uh, profit maximizing uh, quantity has a price that is higher than your average total cost. Now it's important to remember, it will become even more important to remember, that price is always set by the demand curve for the firm's product. Now, in perfect competition, it's easy because the demand is equal to your marginal revenue curve. Um, so it's easy to get caught up in that. For future uh, market structures, um, there will be a difference. So if we're asked to graph it out, um, MC equals MR gets us our quantity, our price set by the demand curve, which is the MR curve. So our price is eight. In order to shade in the area of profit, you take that quantity down to the ATC, over to the y-axis. That rectangle, this gray rectangle that's shaded in, 
that is the area of profit. Now, this has a few important distinctions that students frequently mess up. Notice that this area underneath this area right here is not shaded in gray. What I'm shading in right now is red. It is not gray. That's not part of the profit. You have to stick to what those specific parameters are. The output and the ATC and the uh, price of the good. Those three points to the y-axis gets you your profit box. Same token, don't shade in this area that I'm shading in now red. Do not count that as part of your profits. This is not profit. You do not sell more than five units of this good, so you can't profit over here. Those are the things that students most frequently mess up on this graph. So make sure you stick to those parameters. Uh, they will mark it wrong on the AP test. And if you're trying to fudge the graph a little bit to make it look like it's really close, so they'd give it to you either way, they're more apt to just make you, uh, to just take off the points. Uh, so be careful. Don't try to, to have it both ways. Um, be distinct in your answers. Now, if a firm is experiencing a loss, we said that your average cost should be greater than your average revenue. Uh, so your average cost, your ATC, has to be above your Mr. DARP curve. So in this, in this situation, we have our Mr. DARP label out here. It's our um, horizontal, perfectly elastic curve. The output is met by MC equals MR. So MC is the swoosh. MC equals MR is this uh, right here. That's our intersection. That gets you your quantity. The price is set by the Mr. Dark curve, so that's your price. It's experiencing a loss because at that quantity, your ATC is above. To shade in the area of loss, you analyze it the same way that you did for profit. The quantity to the ATC curve to the y-axis. The area that's in gray is the loss. You can figure it out per unit by doing the difference between uh, your average uh, revenue and your average cost. The difference between those is your per unit loss. The total loss is just the area of the rectangle. So it's um, the per unit loss times the number of units sold, which is set by your output quantity. Just like you, uh, students frequently make mistakes shading in areas where they shouldn't for uh, profits, they do it for losses too. Most frequently, if students get this wrong, they shade in this area that I'm shading in red. Don't do that. That is nothing. Those quantities aren't sold. That's nothing. So make sure you stick to the quantity uh, and the ATC as you're doing this. If a firm is breaking even or earning a normal profit, uh, then the ATC will intersect MC and Mr. Darp all at the same place. You see it right there on the graph. Remember, if a firm is earning a normal profit, it is still earning accounting profits because accounting profits will always be greater than economic profits. So this isn't a bad situation for perfect competition. And this is actually the normal uh, setup for perfect competition. This is where perfect competitors will always end up. One important distinction on this graph is that MC and ATC are intersecting where ATC is at its lowest point. That's an important distinction because it should always happen that way. MC should always intersect ATC at ATC's lowest point. It should do the same thing for ABC. We went over this when we did cost curves, but this is just a good reminder uh, to always do that. Now, you will have a short run production decision. Should a firm continue to produce even though it's earning negative profits, which is a loss? Um, should it continue to do that? Why would it continue to do that? Well, to minimize its losses, in other words. Uh, so what you do is you compare losses from producing at your um, price equals your marginal cost, your MC equals MR level, uh, with the losses from shutting down. If you shut down in the short run, you produce nothing. But if you produce nothing, 
you still have your fixed costs. So you still have costs associated. So the shutdown rule is you shut down when your total revenue is less than your total variable cost. And that's because you won't be covering your variable cost. Uh, and I say covering here, but I really mean your total, uh, whenever you write this out, you should say your price is greater than your average variable cost or your total revenue is greater than your uh, total variable cost. Using the word cover will not answer the, um, uh, the AP test correctly. They will not take, accept that as an answer because cover is too general of a term. You must use the distinctions of greater than or less than, even though colloquially, um, covering really does speak correctly to it. Um, so the best thing to visualize, however, when you're looking at the graph is price being less than your average variable cost. Remember I said before that you didn't always have to draw on the ABC. If you're talking shutdown rule, you do. So if the price has fallen below the level of your average variable cost, then you should shut down in the short run. So what does this look like? This is a firm earning a normal profit, but we drew in the AVC here to illustrate the idea of your shutdown price. So if you have, for some reason, your market price falling to this level. So for some reason, your Mr. Darb has fallen and your new MC equals MR is right here. What this is saying is that your firm is no longer covering, it's no longer uh, paying for all of its variable costs. So if it shuts down, especially if it's below that ABC, if it's shutting if it's shutting down it no longer has to pay for those variable costs it only has to pay for its fixed costs if you shut down you always have to pay for the fixed cost that's an important distinction so if your mr darp curve is in between you continue to produce in order to uh, minimize losses because even though you are incurring losses at the line i just drew you are greater than your average variable costs. You are paying for all of your variable costs, but you are also paying for a little bit of your fixed cost, which means that to shut down, you will pay for the entire fixed cost. So you'd actually lose more money if you shut down in the short run. Anything below your ABC makes sense to shut down because then you only have to pay for your fixed cost as opposed to your fixed cost plus some of your variable costs. So this gets us into a few things. Um, if your price increases from your shutdown price, so like if a firm is at the shutdown price, if it's you know at this price, it's not going to actually produce anything down here. It will never do that because it doesn't make sense. There is no benefit to it. You're not even minimizing losses. However, if you increase the price, as you you know shift your MC, your, I'm sorry, your Mr. Uh, Darp curve up and up and up, the new quantities will always be along your MC curve. Each quantity is going to be along your MC curve as you move your Mr. Darp curve up. So this means that for the firm, your marginal cost curve above your AVC is your supply curve for the perfectly competitive firm. So remember when I said that firms will always produce where supply meets demand? Marginal cost above your AVC is your supply curve for the firm. So where MC or supply meets demand is your production. It's also your price. Uh, and that is an important distinction, important concept to think about, especially as we move forward. This is a favorite question of the AP test. It comes up 
every year and uh, sometimes it shows up as free response sometimes it shows up as multiple choice but it always shows up and it's important to remember now in the long run if the price is consistently below the break-even price uh, and it doesn't firms don't expect it to go up eventually firms will decide to exit the industry so that means sell off all of the fixed inputs and the firm will no longer exist so uh remember perfect competitors have a very easy time entering and exiting the market so this isn't that difficult for them but this is a long-run decision uh at this uh by the same token if the price is above the break-even price for a while this means that more firms will want to enter the market because they will see that essentially easy money is being made. So as more firms enter the market, um, you, you'll see some changes in the uh, in the uh, market graph. So we will be discussing all of that stuff in the next lecture where we look at the idea of long run graphing of the uh, perfect com perfectly competitive firm.